Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. The future of the pebble bed modular reactor looks uncertain, with reports that the project may be shelved, putting hundreds of jobs at risk. Engineering News Senior Contributing Editor Keith Campbell is in the studio to talk about latest developments at the nuclear company. Keith, welcome to Second Take. The PBMR has confirmed that government is reviewing its future support for the project and the company. What has led to this review and when can we expect some certainty? Well, I think the uh, reasons for the review can be summed up in one word, money. Uh, the PBMR is an expensive project. It is a world leading technology program. And it's put South Africa in the unusual position of being one of the leading countries uh, in the world in a very important technology area, namely nuclear power generation. But the program is expensive. Uh, it has been reported that between uh, the 2005-2006 financial year and the 2008-2009 financial year that the PBMR has cost the South African taxpayer nearly four and a half billion rand. So I think there is uh, this factor at work. There may, however, also be other uh, aspects, for example, uh, questions about consolidating South Africa's nuclear sector. Uh, South Africa has the PBMR company, which is about 80% owned directly and indirectly by the South African state. That is, uh, some 80% of its shares are held either by the government directly or by ESCOM, which of course itself is state-owned, or by the Industrial Development Corporation, which is also state-owned. The other 20 so percent is held by the American company Westinghouse, uh, which of course is a nuclear, a specialist nuclear reactor design and manufacturing company. South Africa also has the, uh, nu the Nuclear Energy Corporation, uh, known by its acronym NEXA, uh, which controls and operates the Safari One research reactor at Pelindaba, west of Pretoria. Uh, the interesting thing about NEXA is that the one thing it doesn't do is nuclear energy. It does lots of uh, nuclear-related uh, activities, uh, research, uh, manufacture of radioisotopes, production of specialist gases, and so on. And uh, my suspicion is that the government may be considering merging PBMR and NEXA or putting PBMR under NEXA. Uh, PBMR already has a major test facility at the NEXA complex. And if uh, South Africa reinitiates the full nuclear fuel manufacturing cycle, especially for PBMR's spherical fuel uh, elements, that's, that's why it's called a pebble bed, it's fuel elements in the shape of spheres. Uh, it would be such a production plant would be located at Pelindaba. So it is likely it would make sense to bring PBMR and NEXA together. And NEXA is one of the uh, those involved in the discussions w over the future of PBMR with ESCOM, with PBMR itself under the government. When will the government make a decision? They have to make a decision within a matter of weeks. Uh, February, March. Uh, we do know that PBMR will run out of money uh, probably in April. So a decision has to be made on what the government's going to do before that point comes. The PBMR announced some good news this week. It has signed a cooperation agreement with a Japanese firm. Can you tell us more? Well, this is an agreement with a very big Japanese group, the Mits Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, who are, among other things, uh, one of the world's leading specialists in manufacture of major nuclear reactor components. Things like uh, the core barrel, which is a, a big steel compo component within which the reactor core uh, would be put. And the agreement is for the two to work together to identify possible cooperation uh, on the construction of PBMRs for uh, customers, uh, which could either be in South Africa or could be abroad. The PBMR has undergone uh, redesign over the past year or so. 
The original idea was for a 400 megawatt thermal electricity producing uh, system. And uh, the redesign is for a 200 megawatt thermal system that could be used to produce electricity or process heat or do both at the same time. Uh, process heat opens a whole new market for the PBMR. Well, Keith, the critics argue that the PBMR is a waste of money, while the supporters of the project say it is in the interest of South Africa to continue with the project. What is your take? Well, it has cost a lot of money. Uh, but it is, as I say, a very high technology uh, development. It employs some 780 people, 30% of whom have got master's uh, degrees and PhDs. Um, the thing is, if it's cancelled now, all that money and all that investment is lost to South Africa. The PBMR concept won't die. Uh, the Chinese are also working on PBMR. And there's, there's a good chance that foreign nuclear companies would simply recruit the South African staff uh, uh, into their organizations and have them continue to work on the same basic technology. Uh, in the 21st century with modern telecommunications, they don't even have to move them out of South Africa. Uh, but South Africa would lose the technology. It would become the property of someone else. In this regard, I can't help but think of what happened to Canada in the 1950s. Uh, it's forgotten today that then Canada had one of the biggest and most advanced aerospace industries in the world. And they had a flagship program called the Avro Canada Arrow for a very advanced interceptor fighter. This was a highly expensive and very complex project and it did overrun budget. Uh, there was a change of government in Canada and the new government cancelled the project. It led immediately to the loss of 25,000 high-tech jobs in Canadian industry and tore the heart out of the Canadian aerospace industry. It never recovered and Canada has been uh, quite a minor player in the sector uh, ever since. And South Africa is risking that kind of catastrophe uh, in cancelling the PBMR. Keith, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us on Second Take. That is the Second Take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next week for more news analysis. <laughs>